America. My name is I'm Yosef Frimpong, and I'm coming to you live every week. This time I'm doing it on Thursday. I forgot I'm skipping town tomorrow on Friday, so I just I got to give the people what they want. And, you know, a lot of you guys, and you should kick in $5, 15 or $50 a month to hear what I have to think about the issues and not just that, to try to deepen your own wisdom about the issues, which is why really you should give in $5, 15 or $50, $50 a month because I feel kind of beholden. And so today we're going to talk about the union election in Bessemer, Alabama. This is a certification election. If you don't know, in order to become a recognized bargaining party on your workplace, the process usually goes that you approach or you approach an independent union. And it's important that these unions are independent. You want an independent union that then agrees to negotiate on behalf of the workers broadly construed. Who exactly counts as a worker and then who counts as a manager is something that is um, negotiated out. But you want a bargaining unit. I mean, you want an independent group of professionals to negotiate wages, your control over wages and working conditions, because the, uh, the logic is that one person doesn't have the power to either compete with Amazon as an independent producer or to negotiate with Amazon as an independent worker because uh, the Amazon knows that you can't compete with them. <laughs> That's the logic of kind of capital. They know you can't compete with them, so you have to work for them. And if you work for them and you can't work for anybody else, that means you're going to work for them on their terms, right? But you can balance the power between labor and employers if the workers come together as a unit, right? And some people say like, well, why do you need, you need, uh, you, why do you need a union? Can't you just lean in? Look, a lot of, especially black people, black people listen to Sheryl Sandberg, they leaned in and got fired. They found out how they were replaceable by white people younger than they were. So no, one pe one person can't lean in. Knowing your value is for like wealthy white women. It's not for black workers. You knowing your value, I'm talking about Mika Brzezinski's book where she said, uh, you know, women have to know their value when they negotiate. Like, like, you're disposable. You're disposable. They can find a white younger version of you if you're black. Um, or you're like me, you're not, uh, they can't find a, a white younger version of me, but nobody wants, like, they're not going to want to hear what I have to say because I say things like this, which is once again, if you want me to continue saying things like this, you really should go to www.funkyacademic.com, kick in five, fifteen, dollars or $50 a month so I can build my presence and at least, you know, let the people know how they should think of their world, right? So one person can't negotiate against the manager. It, it takes a group of people negotiating on behalf of people of their class on what scheduled pay raises should look like, right? So in Bessemer, Alabama, it's a little bit tricky because a lot of people are getting paid $15 an hour. So it's not obvious that the wages are a problem. Not that $15 an hour is real money, but in Bessemer, Alabama, it's not, it's not no money. But uh, there, it's a lot about working conditions, <laughs> like what you have to do to go to the bathroom, right? Um, so they're getting, they want some sort of say over their working conditions. And since Amazon's making a ton of money, they want some sort of say that maybe they should get a bigger share than, than $15 an hour. Jeff Bezos makes a lot of money. I have, maybe it should be spread around a little bit, right? So I would like them, I think, I think they're doing a necessary service in COVID conditions that they can't work from home on Zoom. And so I think that, you know, they should be getting $20, $22 an hour to work at the Amazon warehouse. That sounds fine to me. They work for a living and we like Amazon. This came from Amazon. This came from Amazon. A lot of the things, like a lot of the things, the camera came from Amazon. A lot of the things that allow us to be come from Amazon. So I'm grateful for Amazon. I also think that the Amazon brass should get paid less and the Amazon workers should pay more, should get paid more. So I would be in favor of redistributing that way. And I, uh, so there's an Amazon certification uh, election. So workers come together, are approached by a union, and the union says, we want to represent all the workers and negotiate with you. We'll form a committee or a bargaining, a steering committee of workers, and we'll negotiate, you know, schedules for pay raises so you don't end up working 10 years at the same company with like 15 cent raises. We'll, we'll, um, pay schedules and like non and wages that are actually tied to the profitability of the company rather than just uh, poverty wages, regardless of how much money the company makes. 
So what um, everyone signs, what the union does is they get an acknowledgement card saying that I want blank and blank union to sign me. So the workers will all sign cards. And I, you know, I've been on this side of the labor struggle quite a bit. And I was very good at getting people to sign cards. Would you believe if I put a card in your face, most people left signing? Because I, you know, I'm, depending on who you talk to, I'm, I'm moderately persuasive about things that are important. And I was actually fighting for their dignity. So, you know, you don't want to be the person. <laughs> you don't want to be the person who didn't go to the March on Washington. You don't want to be the person who didn't sign the card. So, um, you get people to sign cards, and if you get over 50% of the workers to sign cards, you can present those cards to the, uh, the employer and say, like, look, over 50% of the workers want us to negotiate. Can you please recognize us as the official bargaining unit of this group of workers? And at which point the employer can say, screw you, or they could say, like, okay, let's talk. Let's work out a contract for the workers. Most of the time they say, screw you. And this is why the National Labor Relations Board was founded. So now um, it can trigger a process where if you get over 50% of the workers to sign a card, you can trigger a process that will um, call for an election, a secret ballot election where workers go in and vote whether they want this union to represent them as a unit. And if the election passes, then whatever union is, uh, is the elected representative, the bargaining body, for the workers, and then they work out pay schedules, and they work out working conditions and sick days. Because right now, I mean, that's a problem. We have job sites where you're supposed to sign up for 60 hours a week, but then they schedule you for 35, and then those last five hours, they just have you on call. Apparently, Walmart's like that, where they just kind of have you. Uh, they'll schedule you for a ton of hours, knowing that, you, uh, but like actually schedule you for slightly less, and then just kind of call you when they feel like it. Or you could go in, and then it gets slow, and they just say, go home. You just have to always be ready. <laughs> it's like the NFL. You could just get cut. And so, um, and so we have to talk about what it means to have actual scheduled time and, and have, uh, uh, a sense of, you know, of that working for somebody else isn't slavery. And for black people, we don't actually know what it's like to be employees. I've talked about this before. We know what it's like to be slaves and then just above slaves. We don't know what it's like to be employees. Being an employee isn't so bad. Most people are employees. 95% of the workforce are employees. They work for somebody else. And of that 5%, most of them are like hustlers, right? So most people in America who live very comfortably work for somebody else. They're just employees. We created employees. And if you read the history of American labor, pretty much during the New Deal is when like, we actually like, got serious about what employees are. Black people never got that because we didn't get a lot of the New Deal. The white people became employees. Um, and being an employee isn't that bad. You get vacation, you get, you know, 401ks and retirement. There's no shame in being an employee. Uh, industrial economies need firms to get bigger in order to be able to produce more efficiently, right? And that means goods are cheaper and everyone wins. So there's nothing wrong with being an employee. The problem is being a slave. And you can't really compete with bigger companies. So they have to outcompete each other. They outcompete each other by growing. And then they grow so big that single people can't compete with them. None of this necessarily is bad unless when you work for them, you're treated like you're disposable. In that case, uh, you're just a slave again. So we want out of that slavery, but we just want to be treat like we want <laughs> treat me like a white employee. That means I want a 401k, retirement, a real salary, or a real wage. Um, so the problem isn't being an employee. The answer isn't everyone try to own your own business and then go compete with Amazon. That, that ain't happening. Um, the answer is black people being employees and not slaves on the job. Uh, so. Good. So they're fighting for the right um, to be employed, to be recognized as employees, as opposed to, you know, these, like, this is Bessemer, Alabama. These people's grandparents were either domestic help or sharecroppers. You can say, I mean, don't be racist like that. No, I'm telling you the truth. These people's grandparents and great grandparents were either domestic help or sharecroppers, right? Up until the 50s, 75% of the Southern black workforce were domestic help or farm workers. Farm workers meant all sorts of things. Most of them, most of the meant you were working 
some white guy's land, right? So these are descendants of that. And have they really left the situation of their great grandparents? Not a lot, no. Not, I, depending on who you talk to, if it's the only job in town and that, that pays a decent wage, then no, they, they're still like looking for some man's coin. Um, and that's going to be a problem. I want these people to have actually the, the say in their working condition so they don't have to ask boss man to go to the bathroom. Right? So that they actually have vacations. So that they actually have good health care and appropriate PPE and all that stuff. So what, um, when, you, or when you work one of these elections, what you realize is that it starts out being about wages, but in the middle of the campaign, pretty early actually, it really, people are actually moved by dignity. It's a, this is about dignity. This is about working, contributing without being a slave. This is about working, contributing, and actually having a say in your working conditions. These people aren't anti-Amazon. I'm not even anti-Amazon. I like the fact that I click on stuff and stuff comes. I think they just need to change some of the business practices to be a little bit less predatory on competitors and a little bit less um, exploitative to their employees, which they can do and still maintain a profit margin for if the upper brass takes a haircut. So empower the workers, they'll make a better Amazon, and I'll keep clicking and buying things, which I think is awesome. I want everybody working, and I want me to be able to click and buy things. So I'm pro I'm pro industrial democracy. I mean, I'm pro industrial economy. I'm just anti exploitation. And those two don't have to go together. Um, I mean, in Germany, they have something called Mitbestimmung, which just means kind of co determination. Mit means with. So, like being with, co determination. And uh, that just means half of the employees, I mean, half of the board of directors are employees, um, are elected representatives of the employees. So, it's not just you're negotiating come contract time, like the board of directors is made up of union people, a duly elected union people of the company. Right? And this is Germany. They, they have a pretty thriving economy. So um, em the employees are, being, are voting to see if they are going to be represented as a union with the understanding that only one person, that one person talking against boss man uh, negotiating is... The only way you're going to get money out of that is if you agree to sell out everybody else. Which, unfortunately, is the job for a lot of black Americans. The best job for a black American, I say this as a black American who was, used to be young and is now middle-aged, it became clear to me that the best job for black people, for black Americans, is selling out other black people to white people. Hey, look, that, that was Obama's job, depending on who you talk to. That was also John Lewis's job, depending on who you talk to, including myself. Um, and also... Black people do better and are the most unionized demographic because it's harder to get fired. And in the private sector without a union, black people, we just get fired for standing up for black people. We just get, <laughs> we just get fired for making white people nervous. So it's not an accident that we're the most unionized demographics. Um, because, and like, you know, government jobs have been good for us and because those are jobs where you just have to do the job. You don't have to do the job and kiss white ass. Because those are two jobs. When black people work a job, it's a double day. We do the job and we kiss white ass. That's a, that's a whole nother job. And unions get rid or like lessen the degree of the second job. You just have to now just do the job, just fill the boxes. You don't have to kiss white ass. So what we're talking about is a certification election, an election where you um, uh, will be recognized and you have to be recognized as the um, uh, the negotiator for the body of workers. The problem is elections aren't magic. They don't exactly, elections don't equal democracy. In the United States, we tend to think that election equals democracy, or at least some people do. But you know, I, I just remember, um, I just, well, I was part of a union election got thrown out because the, you're not supposed to bully, you're not supposed to bribe. And the company I was working for was doing all of that running up to the election they were bullying they were bribing they were um they were doing everything that they were breaking the laws and then they get caught breaking the laws and then they'd have to um uh, attach a uh, attach a notice saying we're sorry we broke this law uh about electioneering and they'd have to post it but they'd post it under the table like literally under the table because they had they had to post it 
um, somewhere. And then they go on break at the law. So they did that for the month leading up to the election. And so we narrowly lost the election. But then the NLRB had to throw out the election once all of the charges were, uh, um, once it became how obvious, how blatant the company was at just like bullying, bribing, and threatening people about the election. But in Bessemer, Alabama, that's not going to be the case. What's going to happen is, one, they're going to lose the election. I think, I think the folks in Alabama are going to lose the election because of structural reasons. Because what's on the ballot, the company I was working for wasn't going to shut down. What's on the ballot in Bessemer is that, you know, if, we, if you say yes, there's a 50-50 chance we'll just close this faculty. We'll, we'll just close this facility. They're going to deny saying that, but that's going to be the subtext of every meeting. In Bessemer, Alabama, right now, you can force people, the company is, as we speak, forcing people to sit in meetings. Apparently, they're paying $10,000 like a day in, uh, in consulting fees. And that's, I suspect, a fraction of what the, the total anti-union campaign is. You could force employees to sit in meetings where you could suggest 16 different ways that if you vote yes, for this um, uh, uh, certification, then we will shut down the factory and move two counties over. They can't officially say that, but they're unofficially saying it 16 different ways. And it might be true. And they're telling friends of friends. They're telling, they're talking, the Amazon's smart. They have an infinite amount of money. So they're going to talk to your pastor. They're going to talk to your pastor and get that like kind of low key put into the, uh, sermon that Jesus wants you to just shut up and work and they'll talk to your barber that like um I just I'm reading chat someone says Walmart closed their Oakland store when the workers unionized so yeah I mean like that's a threat and it's going to be a threat that lands because it's a credible threat and so this is a problem. So what's on the ballot isn't really, do I want, do I feel better with this union negotiating my wages and working conditions on my behalf? Or do I feel better individually going up to my manager negotiating the wages and working conditions? That's not on the ballot. That's what should be on the ballot, but that's not on the ballot. What's on the ballot is, do I want this warehouse to close down? Yes or no? That's what's on the ballot. So once you understand that what's on the ballot isn't obviously what's on the ballot, a whole lot of like fake elections start making sense. For example, in, uh, in Iraq, I remember in 2004, Saddam Hussein was, 2003, 2004, Saddam Hussein was um, uh, elected by like 98%. And the ballot was like, Saddam Hussein yes or Saddam Hussein no. Right? So elections aren't magic. It's not like you will have your finger on the pulse of the will of the people after this election. Um, uh, like with the, with the verdict of this election. This election will just tell you whether people want Amazon fa facility to shut down because that's, what, that's what's really uh, at, at stake. And I, since I study a lot of Hegel, I'm going to talk a little bit about Hegel, just a little bit. Right? So... One of the things that uh, Hegel's argument against Stoicism, and he called it like, he just understood it as the morality of a kind of a slave morality, where you don't have to be free in what you do. You just have to kind of be free in your mind. And one of the reasons why he was against it, he was like, look, slave jobs, a slave job, the only job is slavery. It's not, you can be a slave plumber, you can be a slave field worker, you can be a slave house Negro. Oh, he didn't say house Negro. Yeah, you, you, can be a, you can be a slave field Negro, you can be a slave uh, anything, you can be a slave Amazon worker. But what you are is a slave. So what's the difference between a slave and someone who um, is deciding, a craftsman, a plumber, an Amazon worker, a worker, an employee? For Hegel, he sees the difference as the slave would do anything because what's guiding that motion is the fear of like social or actual death, the great nothing. So it doesn't really matter. The slave doesn't care what the slave does because it's not about that for the slave. The slave will do anything. The master's lash or the master's gun um, tells you uh, to do. So in that case, you can't say that the workers in Amazon choose to do this. No, 
if the alternative is degradation and social death and no jobs, because it's best from Alabama, then that's not actually a choice. They're not craftsmen. Um, they're not employees. So what's on, so you're asking a slave, and this is why, honestly, let's be honest. If you have, I'll tell you right now, if America, the U.S., had had an election about whether to be under the auspices of the crown or to be free colonies, you know, there's a 50-50 chance we'd be colonies right now, right? Not only that, I mean, especially if black people voted because, uh, you know, the uh, England was getting rid of slavery at the time. So when the founders wanted to protect property, founders like Madison, they meant protecting their Negroes uh, as their own, <laughs> as not free. But so there's that. There's also, it's also the case that, you know, even if you let slaves vote, do you want to be under the, in the plantation, continue to be slaves, or do you want freedom? Except, except you'll have no standing. The law will be against you and your masters will be resentful and you won't have any, um, uh, way to earn money except working for those masters who now hate you. Whether you rather be slaves or free, and you won't have any standing. Um, uh, would the slaves vote against slavery or would they just keep it with the devil they know? I, like, it's not obvious to me that they would have voted themselves uh, <laughs> into starvation and degradation, as, uh, you know, Seneca just said in chat. Like, I don't like, so what's, What's, uh, what's on the ballot is, do you want to starve? Do you want to vote yourself into starvation? Not, do you think that a union is better at, uh, has more power negotiating for you than you do one-on-one, -on -one, right? So the answer is that nothing, this, is an, this, is an arbit, this election is an arbitrary and irresponsible use of democratic institutions. It should be automatic certification. And if you're going to organize, you should just organize to strike. Just organize for a strike. The, um, the, the, the Birmingham bus boycott wasn't organizing for a vote. It was organizing just to strike. So just organize for the strike because it's going to be the same amount. It's the same, it's the same effort. And it's not as if... if by some reason, and I don't think it's going to happen. If by some reason the people in Alabama win this, um, uh, win this election, it's going to start a wave of, of, of elections. No, it won't. What it will do was it'll trigger a process of decertification. Amazon's going to put all of its money into either closing the factory and opening it somewhere else, or Get, getting rid of all of the organizers and bringing in new people, organize a decertification, do this again, and then it'll, it'll, they'll vote to decertify the election, to decertify the union, right? So the only way you get around this is just automatic unionization of any factory that's over 100 people. And they could vote for which union they want to represent them. Um... Yeah, they just get to vote for which, and that way you have the unions kind of uh, competing against each other, which I could be like for the for the workers. But they shouldn't organize for just you don't you don't vote whether you should be seen as like a functional, <laughs> empowered person. That's not the vote. It's what you do with that power, right? So right now the vote is a sham vote, and it should be understood as a sham vote, and it's not going to trigger other organizing campaigns because what it will trigger is a decertification election in a year and um and like amazon's going to grow smarter in its anti-union campaigns other places but this is not that kind of shot off the bow like it's i don't I, it's just that's not you don't you don't build a movement off of successive david and goliath wins like, no, David, Goliath, David and Goliath works because it's one time. Like, that's not a seven-game series. In the seven-game series, Goliath wins. 
So don't think of this like the Bessemer example being a <laughs> don't think the Bessemer example being like some sort of tip of the iceberg. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. They'll win if I don't think they will, but if they win in Bessemer, that doesn't mean they'll like the one in you know Columbia, South Carolina, or like any other fulfillment center in Georgia, the one outside in, in Gwinnett County. I think it's in Decatur or not Decatur. It doesn't mean that they're next. It it doesn't. <laughs> it does not one bit. Um, that's not how history marches. History marches when we push our people for automatic certification, or when you just organize to strike, strike for strike for recognition. Recognize us, or we just shut it down. And that way, you don't need like the theater of democracy. You just strike or shut it down. You organize for a strike, and and that's it, right? So. Um, it's not that I'm anti-union, I'm anti-certification elections because you don't vote your way into this kind of dignity. <laughs> like Either you have it or you have to show that you'll cripple them to get it. And if you're not going to show that you cripple them to get it, then don't expect like an election. And elections aren't magic. You might as well be, do trials by combat. They used to do trial by combat because if God was on your favor, you'd win the fight. That's pretty much what this is. It's, a, it's an arbitrary institution that's not sensitive to the context that would actually make the election meaningful. And so, and I worry how the results either way are going to be interpreted. So we have to call it now before the election happens that this whole thing was illegitimate. The whole thing was illegitimate and this should not be, this is not the movement forward for the union movement in America. The movement forward for the union movement for America is either striking for recognition or automatic certification, pushing your election, uh, your your politicians to push for automatic certification. All right. Thank you for your time. Hey, I think you should give me. I think you should give me five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month for giving you the quality of insight that you're not going to hear anywhere. They're not going to let me talk about this on MSNBC. <laughs> Say that you know elections are sometimes trash, because elections are sometimes trash. It, it depends on the context. You don't, uh, so Amazon, you can't talk about the union on Amazon's property. So um, what was happening was that there was a, a, flat, uh, a stoplight, a street light to get out of Amazon, like on the main court to get out of Amazon. And when the street light was red, people were running up to the cars and like saying, all right, so the union election's happening. Here's your information about the union election. If you have any questions, please call us here. Don't hesitate to call us. Um, and uh, while the light was red and it was working, right? And so what Amazon did was lobby the city to make that light shorter. <laughs> like you can, you're not going to win against that. This isn't, this isn't the movies. You don't win against that when, you, when they have such ideological and political control. You're not going to win against that. So Amazon's having captive meetings inside the warehouse and, while frustrating all of the conditions to meet people who are pro-union outside of the warehouse. So they're having anti-union meetings inside of the warehouse and probably on your TVs and on, like, they probably bought all sorts of marketing um, and frustrating the conditions for pro-union meetings outside the warehouse. So I like, it's just, this isn't, this isn't fantasy. I, and I think you would, it would take fantasy to, um, for, I don't know, for black people to, to win this election. So thank you for your time. And automatic certification is the answer. Striking for recognition is the answer, not union elections. It's just, the, there's no way to, there will ever be fair, free and fair. Uh, the, the content of the ballot changes. It's not, do you want this union to represent you or not? It's, do you want the facility to shut down? That's, the, that's what the content of the question is. And as long as that's the content of the question, you don't know anything about like, the answer because it's not a judgment on unionization. It's a judgment on having a job or starving. All right, thank you for your time. I will see you next week. If you appreciate the work I do every week and you think that I should continue to do it because I'm giving you the quality of political knowledge and insight that will help you not squander your life and kind of rescue meaning from it, then go ahead 
and go to www.funkyacademic.com and kick in five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month, or make one enormous donations. I like the monthlies because it allows me to budget more, and that'll help me, you know, with a marketing budget or getting better equipment that works all the time. Because a lot of, in a lot of ways, freedom means having equipment that works every time you turn it on. <laughs> and I want to be a free Negro. So um, if you like what I do, go to funkyacademic.com and contribute. Thanks often comes in the form of cash. And the site takes 